Hello friends, welcome to my lecture. Myself, Amlan Das. Now, I am going to discuss about Planck's law of radiation. The laws of radiation as deduced theoretically from classical principle by Wiens and Rayleigh-Jeans. However, failed to interpret the experimentally observed energy distribution curve amongst different wavelengths of black body radiation. In order to explain the distribution of energy in the spectrum of a black body, Max Planck in 19 put forward the quantum theory of radiation. He assumed that atoms in the walls of a black body behaves like a simple harmonic oscillator and each has a characteristic frequency of oscillation. In his theory, he made two radical assumptions about atomic oscillators. The first assumption is a simple harmonic oscillator cannot have any arbitrary values of energy but only those values of total energy E that are given by the relation E equals to N H nu. Here N equals to 0, 1, 2, 3 respectively. Okay. N is called principal quantum number, H is Planck's constant and nu is the frequency of oscillation. Okay. Now in this relation H nu is the basic unit of energy and it is called quantum of energy. Thus, this relation shows that total energy of an oscillator is quantized. Okay. Now, the second assumption is as long as the oscillator has energy equal to one of the allowed values given by the relation E equals to NH nu, it cannot emit or absorb energy. Therefore, the oscillator is said to be in a stationary state or in a quantum state of energy. The emission or absorption of energy occurs only when oscillator jumps from one energy state to another. If the oscillator jumps down from higher energy state of quantum number N2 to a lower energy state of quantum number N1, the energy emitted is given by E2 minus E1 equals to N2 minus N1 into H nu. Okay. If N2 minus N1 is 1 unit, then E2 minus E1 equals to H nu. Okay. Similarly, an oscillator absorbs a quantum H nu of energy when it jumps up to its next higher energy state. Thus, emitted or absorbed energies may be H nu, 2H nu, 3H nu respectively but not in between. Okay. Now we know that the relative probability that an oscillator has energy H nu at temperature T is given by the Boltzmann factor e to the power minus H nu by Kt. Okay. Now let N0, N1, N2, Nr be the number of oscillators having energies 0, H nu, 2 H nu, R H nu respectively. Okay. Then we have Nr equals to N0 e to the power minus R H nu by Kt. Okay. So the total oscillator, total number of oscillator is N equals to N0 plus N1 plus N2 plus dot dot. This can be written as N0 plus N0 e to the power minus H nu by Kt plus this is equals to N0 e to the power minus 2H nu by Kt plus dot dot. Okay. N0 common 1 plus e to the power minus H nu by Kt plus e to the power minus 2H nu by Kt plus dot dot. Okay. This is equals to N0 by 
this can be simplified as 1 minus e to the power minus h nu by kt okay suppose this is equation 1 okay so this is the total number of oscillator okay now we calculate total energy of the oscillator okay so the total energy of the oscillator is epsilon equals to n0 into 0 plus n1 into h nu plus n2 into 2h nu plus n3 into 3h nu plus dot dot okay so this can be written as 0 plus this is equals to n0 e to the power minus h nu by kt into h nu plus this is equals to n0 e to the power minus 2h nu by kt into 2h nu plus n0 e to the power minus 3h nu by kt into 3h nu okay plus dot dot this is equals to n0 e to the power minus h nu by kt into h nu common 1 plus this is equals to 2 e to the power minus h nu by kt plus 3 e to the power minus 2h nu by kt plus dot dot okay this is equals to n0 e to the power minus h nu by kt into h nu by this can be simplified as 1 minus e to the power minus h nu by kt square okay suppose this is equation 2 okay so this is the total energy of the oscillator okay now dividing equation 2 by 1 we get the average energy of the oscillator okay so the average energy of the oscillator is epsilon bar equals to epsilon by n okay now if we divide equation 2 by 1 we get this is equals to e to the power minus h nu by kt into h nu by 1 minus e to the power minus h nu by kt okay this is equals to h nu by e to the power h nu by kt minus 1 okay suppose this is equation 3 so this is the average energy of the oscillator okay now we know that the number of modes of vibration per unit volume between frequency range nu and nu plus d nu is n nu d nu equals to 8 pi nu square by c cube into d nu okay suppose this is equation 4 so this is the number of modes of vibration per unit volume between frequency range nu and nu plus d nu so the energy density of radiation in the frequency interval nu and nu plus d nu is u nu d nu equals to 8 pi nu square by c cube into d nu into epsilon bar okay now we put the value of epsilon bar so this is equals to 8 pi nu square by c cube into d nu into h nu by e to the power h nu by kt minus 1 this is equals to 8 pi h by c cube into nu cube by e to the power h nu by kt minus 1 into d nu okay so u nu d nu is this so this is the energy density of radiation in the frequency range nu and nu plus d nu okay and this is the Planck's law of radiation in terms of frequency okay now we want to express this Planck's law of radiation in terms of wavelength okay
we want to express this Planck's law in terms of wavelength. Okay, we know that nu equals to c by lambda. Okay, so d nu equals to minus c by lambda square into d lambda, and since increase in frequency corresponds to decrease in wavelength, so we can write u lambda d lambda equals to minus u nu d nu. Okay, so we may write u lambda d lambda equals to 8 pi h by c cube into c by lambda cube into 1 by e to the power h c by lambda kt minus 1 into c by lambda square into d lambda. Okay. So this is equals to 8 pi h c by lambda to the power 5 1 by e to the power h c by lambda kt minus 1 into d lambda okay so u lambda d lambda is this so this gives the energy density of radiation in the wavelength range lambda and lambda plus d lambda in the spectrum of a black body okay and this is the Planck's law of radiation in terms of wavelength. Okay. Thank you for watching this video.